Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I'm gonna talk about the news that's come out recently about JJ producing a new Superman movie. In fact, it being a reboot in the DCEU and kind of what that necessarily means in the grand scheme of things, which I do notice I've been talking a hell of a lot about reboots, back-to-back -back videos about reboots. But just like, once again, I'm one of those people that's fine with reboots. I know not everyone is, but it's just like, these are just uh, things that are coming up kind of in the entertainment news that I find very fascinating. I'm always down for a reboot, especially, you know, under certain projects that I like. But regardless, obviously this has been a big conversation in many different different parts because obviously some of the news has come out there. To be fair, at the time you're recording this, it's been, it seems like it's confirmed about the reboot and like who's associated, but not necessarily the angle of there being a black Superman. That's been a topic of conversation for a lot of people. Everyone's made their videos and think pieces about it. I would say I figured I might as well join in on the conversation because I think it's kind of an interesting topic. But um, for me personally, like I, I can't, I, obviously there's various opinions going forward. For one, there's people who are just straight up, I don't want a black Superman, which is, hey, you're entitled to your opinion. Then there's other people who are, are not for this as a reboot just because they don't want because a lot of people are like, oh, but what does that mean about Henry Cavill? Like, because a lot of people, yeah, they might not have necessarily liked Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. Obviously, they're still waiting to see what he's like in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. And obviously, they got him a little bit in Justice League. Obviously, uh, some of that might not have been for everyone. I'm someone who liked, like, all three movies, including Justice League. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for the Snyder. Well, Zack Snyder's Justice League, as some people would probably phrase it, because some people don't, probably don't want to label it as necessarily the Snyder Cut, regardless. Um, so I like Henry Cavill in the role and stuff like that. So, but you know, for some people it's like, they don't want it rebooted just because they're like, oh, that means he won't get his shot. So there's that angle to it, which I can totally understand when there's someone that you really like. And obviously it seems like he's really been down about playing Superman. He, he really enjoyed it that maybe he didn't have the opportunity to flex himself the way he wants to, to really portray the character he would you know, want to, and you know, uh, other people kind of want him to have an opportunity to. But now, obviously, there's other people that's like, you know, who might feel like that, but but will also feel like, hey, like you know, Superman has been a certain way for so long. Like it's okay to decide to flip things up, you know, change things up, and you know, that's kind of where I fly in a situation where it's like Superman has been this way, and you want to do something different. Like you know, I I'm totally fine with that, you know, because um, obviously, some people are wondering too, is like when it comes to the character, are they doing like a black? Superman at Black Clark Kent or are we doing a, another Superman from a different Earth because the one I've seen people kind of throw out there is I think his name's Calvin Ellis. Uh, I'm, I'm not the biggest comic book dude so I don't know anything. I'm only picking up what I've heard people discuss and stuff like that. So some people are wondering like is this kind of like an Elseworlds situation of like oh this is well more so a multiverse thing but those two can kind of coexist but is this kind of a multiverse thing of this is a Superman from a different Earth so that way we can have both Henry Cavill and get a black Superman as well, which I'm sure some people would be like, I'm, and that could that could be an argument depending on who how you feel about. It. Some people might feel like that's too much of a cop out. It's like no, go all in or not. Like don't just give us a black Superman. Just give us the black Superman. Give us Clark Kent black Superman. You know, rather than it just being a. But you know, because but other people might say like, well, give this. Well, this character existed at Cotton. We give him a time to shine and be in a spotlight. You know, Clark Kent's had his day in the sun. Let this other character have his chance. You know, this other specific Superman, not just make Clark Kent black. You know, so it's like I said, it's just it's an, an interesting conversation and discussion. I. I I find because obviously there's also the thing of like you know there's nothing that says Clark Kent has to necessarily be white because obviously this is also like a whole thing about like well the character was designed the way he was um because of the time and age that he was born and created in but it's like obviously we um uh, an example I used recently was Krypton. If you've never seen the show Krypton, I highly recommend you check it out. Yes, it was short-lived, but I think it did a lot of really interesting things with the Superman canon. When you look at that Krypton, it was very like multi multifaceted in the sense of like, oh, it wasn't just like one particular race. It was uh, black people, white people, but it also did an interesting thing of, oh, like everyone on Krypton just has a British accent, which that's pretty dope. I don't think I've ever seen that depicted before now, but regardless. So it's, it's not like Superman, Clark Kent, has to be white so you can kind of do whatever you want to so if they want to make Clark Kent black they can and it wouldn't be like it's not like it's the most outrageous crazy thing out there anyway you know but 
going back to the, the conversation of you know Superman being represented for his time because obviously a big thing about Superman at least this is how I've always viewed Superman is always been like the all-American hero and kind of these American values that are kind of distilled upon him by the Kents and stuff like that I mean that's obviously I think it becomes less American values and just their personal values that kind of get instilled upon because I don't know if they necessarily will label them as kind of American values but that's kind of what Smallville is supposed to be like a small all-American town type of situation which obviously that's changed in very depending on the continuity and stuff like that but obviously superman being a re representation of the time like if you you know making a black superman like could he ever be the all-american hero being black you know what issues that might cause what he'd have to deal with you know I, obviously that like i said that's been like a multifaceted thing that could be a very interesting take on superman like having to deal with issues that maybe um other supermen in the past would have had to deal with you know that that's something to kind of think about you know and obviously that might not resonate with other people and that's cool but it's just i you know it's just an, an interesting um thing and aspect which i always think is kind of also interesting too because obviously we're getting the reboot of superman in the movies which we've already technically gotten one on tv with superman and lois which is really good i highly recommend you check it out at the time you're recording because it's tuesday may 2nd at the time you're recording this so the second episode is actually coming out tonight um at the time you're recording this but um i just think it's interesting because i mean technically superman and lois is a reboot of a reboot because obviously uh tyler has been playing this version of superman since season two of supergirl so that's kind of a reboot of the superman to a certain extent granted he was in super, uh season one but obviously the character wasn't fully cast you know tyler ultimately didn't take on the role until season two was when he was cast but superman popped up in season one you just never saw his face um so there's that, that whole thing but my point is like so that was kind of a reboot in itself but because of crisis on infinite earths this said superman tyler superman got rebooted again which has led to some very interesting developments i won't say anything but if you haven't seen uh superman Lois, i highly recommend you check it out so i like i said i just think the time is kind of um interesting um in that regard yeah like I, I think maybe it's all you know whether this is coming a conversation or just some people just straight up being like ah if a character is white just leave them that like i don't want to see like you like obviously it's a whole conversation some people have about you know changing a character's gender like make a character that's male making them female uh which i've seen marvel do that and i thought it was kind of interesting and there's because i want to say the same thing happened with the Eternals. I think like the character. I want to say the character Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek are playing specifically. I think those are traditionally males in the comic books, but uh, the roles have been shifted for the movie. I think I'm not trying to bring that up as like oh I'm, trying, I'm making a criticism of it. It's like no, it's just kind of an interesting thing. Another one that sh um, stands out is uh, I'm blanking on a character's uh, name, but uh, for Jessica Jones, Carrie Ann Moss's character is typically a dude in the comic books, but for the TV show they made the character female. So it's just like little things like that. I mean, obviously, there's never always going to be a one to one because obviously, like you know, you when you're bringing something, adapting something, you take your own liberties with it. You do what you want to, which you think you know can bring something interesting, uh, and who you think can bring life to this uh, version of the characters that you're bringing forth. Whether it's like you having maybe you're changing the race of the character, maybe you're changing, like I said, the gender of the character. Whatever the case may be, it's just it's um, a lot of you know fascinating. Um, things so like i said some people that might they might not be down for all that but like i said i'm more open to um them handling things whether it be like i said making him a, a black clark Kent or doing a earth 2 thing or you know like kevin smith because i was watching uh, most recently uh, uh fat man beyond shout out to kevin smith and mark bernard and um kevin had kind of thrown that out there why don't you do, if they're going down potentially these else worlds route anyway why not like the movie the joker was why don't you just go for full blown and just make a section of movies like DC's Elseworlds? You know, that could be the classification for these movies because, you know, DC's in this very unique position that technically it already has its multiverse set up on the TV show front, which connects to the movie because you had TV Flash and Movie Flash meeting each other. So meaning all the DCEU movies are in canon that they take place on different Earths. And obviously the same thing applies to like every DC show, not just the ones on the CW, but also like the DC, well, formerly DC Universe, now just HBO Max shows. So it's, there, there's so much going on there that you could you, you can do. Because that way it presents itself as a, oh, you get everything you want type of thing. But once again, maybe that won't sit well with a lot of people. So, I mean, I guess, once again, I don't hold any character so sacred to me that I'm like, if you want to change them, I'm going to have that issue with it. Like a great example would be MJ from the... Uh, Marvel, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think Zendaya, Zendaya, 
but I flip, uh, flip back and forth, does a fantastic job as MJ. She's probably my favorite iteration of the character. I've always known MJ to be a redhead, but was I like, oh, disappointed when we find out that like she was MJ? Because I didn't know she was playing MJ until it was real. She's like, oh no, my, like the end of Homecoming, she's like, oh yeah, my friends just call me MJ. And it's like, oh shit, because you know, she was just going by her name Michelle like the entire time. So I thought it was just kind of like, oh, maybe they're setting up a new character in this movie. And it's like, nope, she's MJ. So which is like, that's pretty cool. But I really like her version of MJ because she's very like, she's very like, um, kind of like has this dry, monotone, sarcastic humor to her. And I love the dynamic, like her bouncing off other characters, but also like her bouncing off like, you know, Peter and especially what that looks like in two, I think they just make such a cute couple. So that's why like that version of that character, you know, obviously it's different, you know? And even on a DC front, like you take something like McCod Brooks as Jimmy Olsen, that led to some really interesting stories because McCod Brooks being black, portraying uh, Jimmy Olsen in that continuity, it presented interesting stories for him, especially when he became Guardian later on in the struggles of like, oh, like people feeling a little bit differently when they found out like, oh, this is kind of spoilers, but like, oh, there's a black man underneath this superhero that's saving you or this vigilante. Like it, it, it changes things a little bit. It, it, it creates stories that maybe he, they wouldn't been able to tell because obviously in my head, when I think Jimmy Olsen, I think of like the, 90s Superman cartoon of him being a redhead. Like, I don't know if he's always a redhead in, in most continuities or not, but, um, yeah. I mean, when I found out, like, when Supergirl first aired, I was like, oh, shit, that's McCod Brooks and, oh, Jimmy Olsen. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. And I was just like, oh, and it's never, like, an issue. I just think it, to me, it just can add because it's like, oh, you, you get to keep who the character is true at its nature alive. That should be all that matters. But at the same time, you're able to present new and interesting stories that maybe you weren't able to tell before by doing something like that. Letting people see, like, a version of themselves in these stories to be like, okay, this is someone, this is a character that's speaking for me and speaking through my lens, my view of the world, what I experience and what I know, you know? I, I think that's kind of, you know, important when it comes to storytelling, you know? So I, I do apologize because I've been a little bit all over the place. But like I said, just my personal view on it, I'm interested to see what they do. I, I made that perfectly clear. I, you know, it's always interesting when you, you, you know, cause like I said, nothing is ever like 100% a one-for-one -one adaptation, you know? So... Uh, you want to do something different like that? I'm I'm down for it. Like I said, whether you want to make it, hey, this is a black card can't, or you want to do like an Elseworlds or multiverse thing, I'm down for that too. Obviously, these are just my opinions on the subject. You may agree, you may disagree. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm like, it's like I said, it's an interesting conversation. I'd love to hear other people's opinions about. Like I said, everyone's kind of share their thoughts. I just want to you know take an opportunity to kind of fully share mine. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.